Welcome back to The Fishing, everybody. I'm Trent Weldon with Well Done Tanks. Today's video, I want to teach you what to look for in a holding female and how to pull those eggs from said holding female. So what we're talking about today mainly is pulling eggs from mouth brooding females, mainly on these cichlid sites, so cichlid species. I know there's betta species that um, mouth brood. I haven't played with those yet. I even have a pair of Severums or a group of Severums up in my 90 gallon studio tank that should be a mouth brooding Severum. Really excited for that. But down here in this fish room, my main fish room, I am focusing mainly on dwarf cichlid species right now. So it's a little different of where I even have you know, black rams that are gonna be egg layers. I have some some Mulawi crebensis that laid eggs in a cave and they're tending to their fry. But now on these mouth brooding cichlids, instead of letting them mouth brood to term and then releasing the fry in the tank, I like to pull the eggs, move them to an egg tumbler, and that way I feel like I have a better yield, a hatch rate over all of that. So let's get started here. I wanna show you what a mouth brooding female looks like. And then we're gonna move over to my technique that I've used now for months with no issue on pulling the eggs, loading them into a tumbler, and the best practices from there to get the highest hatch rate possible. So this is one of my Kyoga Flameback females that I have here in the fish room that came from a local subscriber. Uh, very fortunate to have this group uh, in the fish room. So currently the group of four that I have, I should have one male, three females. They're hanging out in a 20 gallon long right now. And you can see though, where her mouth, that bottom part of her mouth is protruded, that is a massive amount of eggs in her mouth right now. So it's, that bottom jaw extends to allow her to hold all the eggs or fry in her mouth. And you can see where she's rapidly opening and closing her mouth. That's due to partial stress as I pulled her from the group and put her in a specimen container, but it's also she's pulling water through her mouth and through her gills, circulating the eggs in her mouth. I think you can kind of see in there, just there in her mouth, those egg, those little what, yellow spots in her mouth, that is all eggs. So we are gonna now move her, I'm gonna pull the camera over, and we're gonna set up here to pull the eggs from her, but I wanted to try and give as good of a shot as I can here to show you what a holding female will look like. Is it, let's see if I can do this. Right there. That mouth is super protruded out right there. And you can see the eggs in her mouth right now. So a couple tools to get started with of what I like to use to pull eggs from holding females. It's going to be a Tupperware container. I just like to have a separate container with a wide enough opening that I can work properly and not gonna be in the way of anything. So this is where I'm going to pull the eggs to. A uh, separate container if you need any assistance there. Then, the number one tool I'm going to use is, this is just a twist tie. Come on your, 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 your bread goods, whatever groceries you may need. I like a twist tie, they're soft, well, I mean soft-ish. They're not gonna harm the fish, and it's just something to pop the mouth open. And then, we have a small pipette. This is definitely one I've been using the fish for quite a long time. I just cut the end off of it there to make a bigger opening. This is actually what I'm gonna use uh, to collect the eggs once we're done here. So let's go ahead and get our female. So I hold her in a specimen container, and then this is where I, I grip the fish. I cradle her between these three fingers, just put my thumb right there, because all we need to do is you don't want to hurt the fish, but we need to now pop her mouth open with the twist tie. And it's easier if you can do this underwater. I'm trying to get you the best camera angle I can here. But just keep her underwater. This is why I like the Tupperware container with a little bit of a bigger opening. Pop her mouth open, oh, and this is exactly why I also do this in water. If you lose her, let's cradle her back up. So we need to get that mouth open. And then we're just gonna gently squeeze right behind the eyes. That's like the best way I can say it. Just gently squeeze and she'll start spitting the eggs. Now you can, you can do this with full fry, you can do this with eggs, um, you can do this directly into any egg tumbler you're gonna use. I just prefer to do it into a separate container, mainly because 
these are smaller cichlid species. So this is a Victorian cichlid. I'm gonna call her a dwarf cichlid. She's not huge. There are definitely much, much, much bigger cichlids you can do this with. Then you can pull the mouth open here to check if there's any eggs left. There is not, I don't know if I can get that on camera. You see her mouth is empty. So let's move her back to her tank. Right, so as I was saying, I do it into a container because they're a smaller cichlid species. So these, the egg tumbler we're gonna use um, is the Zis egg tumbler, which it has a relatively large you know, opening that you could strip the eggs directly into it. But with these smaller cichlid species, I find it just easier if I move them into a, a container first before I then load them into the egg tumbler. Just my personal preference, that's how I do it from there. So now let's move the eggs over. So we're gonna fill this up with water. So this is the egg tumbler we're using. We're gonna fill this with water and transfer the eggs over to here. Okay. So if you're gonna tumble this, you can tumble this in the same tank as the parents. I just have so many tumblers going on. I have a set tank for tumblers. So now we're gonna take that three mil pipette, cut the tip off of it. And what this allows us to do is here, I can come in and extract the eggs out of the container much easier this way. And that's where I also count the eggs. So that's just that, you suck them up into the pipette, then you move them over to the tumbler. And this is where I separate any unfertile eggs out. I, it's, it's just a, a fast method and you're not gonna damage the eggs this way. So there was a total of 40 eggs from this spawn. Not bad, not bad at all. So let's go ahead and pull you over to the egg tumbler tank and let's get these eggs actually tumbling. So back here at the tumbler tank, so this is the tank gallon tank that I have set up here to purposely use for tumblers. And I am using the Zis egg tumbler, the Z65, my favorite egg tumbler I've used. So I'm gonna load the eggs up here. Get the top of this tumbler hooked up. All right, so now the top of the tumbler's hooked on. I'm gonna lower this down into the tank. As it starts to fill with water there, it's gonna push the eggs around. And then what's so nice about these is how easy it is to pull the tumbler in and out. So we're gonna just slide that back into place like that. And now we need to actually get the air turned on here. So let's open the valve up. And you just want the air on, in my opinion, just enough where it just, it cradles the eggs. If I turn it up too high, it just pushes them all over the place. I like to where it's just cradling the eggs, kind of like that outer edge of the tumbler, where they almost just look like they're just hovering in place. And that's what's allowed me to have ultimately the best success possible in hatching eggs. So ladies, there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me on this one. Hopefully that helped somebody. Let me know, leave me a comment down below. Have you ever pulled eggs from a holding female before? Is this something you now feel comfortable trying if you haven't? So it's relatively simple. So, and the reason I didn't explain it, the reason that tank is blue of where I'm tumbling the eggs in is I do dose methylene blue to that tank to help the eggs to keep from fungusing. I do in the future wanna experiment using a UV sterilizer in that tank. That's what I'm using for now. So I, I think we're gonna have a good success out of this. I've been hatching a lot of fish that way. Let's say here, my entire fry system is full of fry right now. And that's all fry that has come from those egg tumblers. So on your way out, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one.